Campbell CAR stands for the Campbell University Child Care and Activity Resource. It's a resource for anyone caring for children and offers ideas to keep kids, parents, and teachers active and healthy. Hi, I'm Dr. Katherine Newman, the director of the Campbell University Child Care and Activity Resource, or Campbell CAR. Today I'm talking to Dr. Lillian McNell, Assistant Professor of Public Health at Campbell University. We're talking about food and ways that families can eat more healthfully. Dr. McNell, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, I know that one of the things you study are so-called food deserts. Can you tell us a little bit about what those are? Absolutely. A food desert is a neighborhood or a community that has few or no supermarkets. Maybe they have other food stores like small corner and convenience store, but these stores tend to have fewer options, they tend to be more expensive, they have more snacks and unhealthy options. So families that live in food deserts, they might be paying more for food or they might have to travel farther to reach better options and less expensive options. And I know you have a big interest in rural communities and what's known as food insecurity. Can you talk to us about what food insecurity is and how it relates to rural communities? Mm -hmm. So food deserts are actually a lot more common in rural areas. Most food deserts in America are in rural places mm -hmm. and food insecurity also is worse in rural areas. A lot of times people think about food insecurity as literally being hungry or not having enough food, but actually it's much bigger than that. Food insecurity could be that you have to eat foods you don't prefer because you can't afford other options. Maybe you scamp on meals or parents eat smaller meals so the kids have enough, or it could mean constantly worrying about where your next meal will come from. And food insecurity is especially a problem for young children because their bodies are growing rapidly and if their nutritional needs aren't met when they're young, that could have lifelong health impacts. Um, and in an immediate sense, we all know what it feels like to be hungry, um, you can't concentrate, you get irritable, and this you know, makes it hard for kids to succeed in school. Mm -hmm. Well, as you know, um, a big part of the focus of Campbell Carr is childcare and um, keeping kids healthy in childcare. And some of the research indicates that kids who start childcare earlier, uh, before six months old, and those who spend longer hours in childcare, have a higher risk of obesity. Do you have any thoughts about why this might be true? I think there are a couple of things going on there. Uh, in the U.S., we don't have any sort of paid family leave policies in place. So a lot of times new parents are back to work at most three months after their babies are born. And usually it's less than that. The median is actually just six weeks. So children who start childcare later tend to be the ones whose parents can afford to be out of the workplace for longer. And those wealthier parents also have um, more money and resources to buy healthy food and make sure they have enough food. So long term, I think a way that we can address that is by promoting policies that support paid family leave. But in the immediate sense, there are things we can do too. We can help families find out if they're eligible for social support services like WIC. We can um, provide more places for women who have to go back to work, opportunities to breastfeed in public places or at work. And when we're donating food to our churches or school drives, Instead of just kind of pulling whatever from our pantry that we don't want anymore, we can be really intentional about choosing healthy snacks and kid-friendly snacks, too. And you mentioned breastfeeding. What's the link there? So there's uh, some evidence that suggests that uh, children who are breastfed longer are less likely to be obese or overweight later in life. And if you have to go back to work quickly, then you're not going to be able to as easily or at all sometimes breastfeed for as long. Mm -hmm. So when we talk to uh, caregivers or researchers, um, study caregivers, and what the barriers are to providing kids with healthy meals, they commonly cite the same three things. So lack of resources, lack of time, and then kids' unwillingness to eat unhealthy foods. So do you have any tips or suggestions about how to address those three problems? Yeah, that's a big challenge, <laughs> all of those. I'll start with pickiness because it tends to be the one that we have the most control over. And there are a few strategies that have been shown to be successful. So one thing that schools have tried is something called Try It Tuesdays. What happens is the cafeteria will make samples of healthy meals and the kids will get to taste it, they can rate it, sometimes they can even vote on which ones get adopted. And schools have found that when they do this, kids waste less food, they choose healthier options, and sometimes they even request those healthier options at home. Hmm. Um, at home, I think a good strategy is choosing your battles. You don't have to go all or nothing. So if your kid will only eat baby carrots if they're dipped in ranch dressing, they're at least still eating the carrots, right? That sounds like things at my house. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, juice that is half juice, half water is a step up from juice, even if it's not plain water. So I think, um, you know, 
taking it slowly. Uh, it takes a long time for somebody to develop taste for a new food, so maybe when you introduce a new food, it's just one bite, and then next time it's two bites. Um, and, and then finally, I think a really important thing is being a good role model. Kids will look up to adults and parents. They want to eat what they're eating. And so I think if their parent makes a face when they're eating salad or their adults refuse to eat healthy foods, the kids are going to pick up on that. Mm. Well, you mentioned role models, and there's actually a lot of research that suggests that moms in particular tend to neglect their health in those years when they're raising small children. Do you have any advice for busy moms who are trying to stay healthy? Um, try new foods with your kids, so it's something fun that you do together. Um, be active with them, maybe go for a walk, you can put on a playlist and have a dance party, you can try a fitness video on YouTube. You know, you can be active without joining an expensive gym. Um, but I also think for moms in particular, it's important to take time for yourself. Even if that means five minutes in the morning before anyone else is up with your coffee, or trading your kids for a day with a friend at once a month to do something that you really enjoy. And I don't mean paying the bills or doing housework, but something that you want to do. Um, I think that mental health is just as important as physical health, and kids will notice if their parents are stressed. And you're not a bad mom if you want a break. You're not a bad mom if you take care of yourself. So um, I think carving out space to do something that you like can be really helpful. Yeah, and in fact, I think maybe you're a better mom if you take care of yourself. <laughs> At least I know I am. <laughs> um, so, you know, the other barrier um, that was mentioned there was the time factor. Mm -hmm. And especially for working parents who are sort of rushing home from work, picking kids up at childcare, they're tired, kids are hungry. Give me advice for how to help those busy parents um, tackle the problem of healthy eating. Yeah, um, I think first thing I would say is cut yourself some slack and know you're not alone. It's totally normal and we've all been there and you're not a bad parent if you choose the convenience option sometimes. Um, but that said, just like you can slowly introduce new foods to your kids, I think there are small steps that you can take to help make things easier and less time crunch. So maybe for example, if you work a Monday to Friday type job, then on Sunday you can carve out time to prep some things for the week. You can cut up veggies, you can cook rice, you can hard boil eggs, so that during the week you have quick and healthy snacks available and that when it comes time for meal prep, it's faster. Um, Kind of along that same idea, one thing that's more and more popular is one pot meals or crock pot meals. A lot of times I see perfectly good crock pots at thrift stores even for an inexpensive price and online there are tons of resources for meals that you can just dump in in the morning and then when you get home it's ready to eat. Um, and, and then I think the last thing is that a lot of times convenience options like canned beans and frozen vegetables get a bad rap because they're not fresh. But usually these have the same nutrients as the fresh options and they can really save a lot of time. Especially if you look for canned foods that are low in sodium or frozen veggies that don't have added sauce on them. Well, Dr. McDowell, thanks for sharing your expertise and all those great tips. Do you have any final thoughts or suggestions? Thank you for having me. Um, I love the work that I do and I hope that it's helpful to people. But I do want to be mindful of the fact that a lot of times it is scientists and researchers talking about this and the families themselves aren't always included in the discussion. And I do think it's really important to hear from families with young children, especially those with financial strain, to ask them what they think is healthy and what tips they have for making things work. So I would love to hear from viewers and families about their suggestions and um, what they have to say. All right, and we'll include Dr. McNeil's contact information at the end of this video.